name for any by the name on behalf of uh, Econites. My name is Amre Kaya and I'm the uh, uh, Vice President of Econites. So uh, Econites is what we what we normally call an environmental NGO. Uh, even though I'm not really I don't feel really okay with that term environmental NGO because environmental is focused focuses on, on, on environment. I will tell you why I'm not really into focusing on environment. Okay? Let's wait for this right? And uh, Econize is based in Yamato Lotus Ismail. We carry out a lot of, like I said, a lot of what we call the environmental uh, projects, but I would like to term them as sustainability projects. I will explain to you later on also. Uh, I will know. I have to hit for the slides. So does anybody here never heard of Econize? Can you raise your hand please? I just want to see the, some sort of rough percentage of those who have heard of Econize. Okay. That's about 20%. Maybe more. And those who are malu malu to show their hands also, you can consider 50%. <laughs> no. What is Econize? I'm glad to see all of you here because this shows that you are interested in things which are outside the academic world. I was a university student and I found out being four years in university sometimes and make you stupid also because you are stuck in the university, in a closed area. You don't go out there. When I was studying at the university, I didn't have this kind of, a lot of this kind of opportunities. I was you know, pressure to study hard, get A's and, you know, make sure you pass. And then, so we normally we stay in, in our apartments and then go, and then, you know, end the classes. When we go out there, you can go, you have this strong degree with you. You cannot face the world that well. Because the world is totally outside. Something which is out of a lot of theories that you learn at the university. So you have to know what is happening outside your university, outside these blocks, so that you'll be able to face the real world. You're going to be here only for four years, but uh, most, most of the time, how many years? Five years, six years, PhD, or not. But then when you go out there, you are seeing something which is totally different. Okay? Can you can you read that? Okay, the vision of Econize is to see a nation of ecologically conscious relations that embrace and adopt sustainable lifestyles. Now I am marking that word sustainable in red for a reason. Okay, sustainable lifestyle. What is the meaning of sustainable? That is very, very important. Important term. We have, have you heard of Have you heard of the term sustainable development? You know what is sustainable development? Can anybody tell me what is the the meaning of sustainable development or sustainability? Any students who are taking environmental courses? No. No. Okay. So this is a very important term that you have to understand. What is sustainable? But before that, I would like to explain our vision. In order to achieve that vision, we have carried out some of these activities. For example, activities with the public, we produce publications and whatnot. All this is, is information dissemination or education activities. Capacity building. This is what Econax is all about. We do education projects. Some of the projects involve, for example, now we have this race for a better planet with Sunway properties where we get people to understand what is the importance of environment using some uh, recreational or sports activities. We also have the MHB CARES program. The MHB CARES program is a community development program where we focus our resources to improve the livelihood of uh, C community in 
Johor. Anybody from Johor here? Jo Johor Bahru, Pasirang, where are you from? Muang. 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 Skudai. Have you heard of anybody? You, you're from where? Pasirang. Do you know you, you have a CGC community there? No, you never heard, right? This CGC, they live near the sea. They are the... You have the terrestrial orang asli, you know orang asli, right? Orang asli, and you have the sea orang asli. Okay, so... Bajang Laut is in Sabah, but they are theoretically... Uh, they are believed to be related to that group. So these people, they live there, they live by the sea, they are not used to live in the land, but now they are slowly moving to the land. And these people are socio-economically de deprived, and we are trying to help them to improve their livelihood through education and also economic enterprises. So, uh, yeah, maybe once you need to go to Pasir Udang, you go to this place called Kampo Pasir Udang, you will see this group of people. Actually, there are nine settlements of this forum, this so called CGC. They will see no match. They go from one place to another, but now they are quite settled uh, on the land. And we also have Anugrah Hijau, which is something that I would like you to look into because it involves university and also school students in the environmental projects. And you have you have the award every year. We have been doing it maybe for about 10 years. Uh, Anugrah Hijau. We have the Kuala Lumpur Ecofilm Festival. If any of you are interested in doing uh, documentaries or short uh, films, you can enter the competition where you can meet a lot of people from outside Malaysia also, from other countries who are also uh, promoting their yeah, documentaries and films. And the Work for Water Evida program. Okay, what is sustainable development? Okay, I'm going to be very quick here. I have only a few more minutes. Sustainable development is the use of natural resources. Now, this is very important because they will, this will be applied. This philosophy will be applied during the discussion group or the breakout sessions later on. You know that you're going to have breakout sessions, right? After this, you do not know. <laughs> okay, after this, you will break. Uh, uh, be divided into a few groups where you have some discussions and also some. Uh, uh, you have to come up with presentation text from the organizing committees. But before that, as far as I'll be handling two groups, so as far as that is concerned, I need the groups to understand, or I mean the whole audience to understand what is sustainable development. Because sustainable development is something that is being stressed all over the world right now. Okay? Uh, and it's, it is a term that is being ratified in the Agenda 21 in 1992. This is something that we have to know. Sustainable development is the use of natural resources to fulfill the needs of the present generation without jeopardizing the future generations. This is the meaning of sustainable development. Why is it so important that a lot of countries are stressing this issue, this concept? Because previously, many, many years ago, we have been developing and at the same time destroying the environment. So we have this norm where you want to develop and yet you are at the same time destroying the environment. Can you see where I'm going? You know what I mean? People want to be developed, they want to be economically successful. And at the same time, they, they don't see the limits. And at the end of the day, they find out that we are actually destroying the environment. We build big factories, we build big industries, huge economies, but the river and the air are polluted because we we sort of exceed the limits of natural resources. So this concept is saying that we can develop, we can be developed, but make sure that, but we have to ensure that the way that we are, we are developing does not destroy the environment. And not only now, but we have to make sure that the future generations will be able to use the nature resources, the environment. And the key word there that I would like to stress is generation. Generation of what? 
generation of who? Can you tell me or not? Generation of? Of what? Yes, of? Of human or tigers? Human. The focus is on human. That's why I, I'm not really into saying that Econax is an environmental organization. Because our logo, our slogan is inspiring sustainable livelihoods. We do not mention environment that day. Because our focus is not environment. Yes, environment is important. Okay, we cannot survive without environment. But the focus is human being, human generation. We want to save the environment for what? So that so that who can survive? So that we can survive. Correct or not? It's not about the environment, it's about the, the economy and the social aspects of human human lives. This is very important because a lot of people they are confused. Should we save the tigers or should we save the the people? Save the people first. When the mosquito bites you, do you say, no, this is mosquito, right? wildlife, we should let it bite us. We should let the mosquito bite you. Of course not. You have to put the priority on your life. I'm not saying that environment is not important. Environment is important. When you go out there, you see a lot of people whose lives are being affected by wildlife. I'm a zoology student, and I, learned, I took zoology because I learned wildlife. But that's not the, the most important thing. If you go out there and you see there are people whose lives are being affected by tigers, then you there, 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 there are some conflicts nowadays. Should we save the tigers or should we save the people? If you want to save, let's say if you have one choice, if you save the tiger, if you want to save the people, you have to kill the tiger. If you save the tiger, you have to kill the person. Which which one do you choose? Save the human or save the tiger? Let's say the tiger is the last tiger on earth. If you kill the tiger, that's it. No more tigers on earth. But if you save the tiger, the tiger will kill the human. Which one do you want to save? First. If you are the human, you want to say it's okay, lah, tiger, you eat me, lah, you are the last one. I, I die also, no problem. There are 7 million, 7 billion people on earth right now. Are you willing to sacrifice also? No. The focus is human development, human life. But of course, development in a very strict sense very defined manner. So that's why if you look at the first priority of Agenda 21, it says the focus of development is human survival. Okay. The only way you can save the environment, if you want the environment to be very, very good, is how? How can you save the environment? By not being on earth. That is the only way human can save the environment. The environment became bad, became terrible after human existed on Earth. That's when we start, especially when we found what? We found fire. Once human found fire, that's the start, the beginning of destruction. So if you want to save Earth, you have to stop existing on Earth. You, the moment you were born, you're already using the environment. You already breathe air. You want to take water. You want to wear your clothes. Where do you come to get your clothes? Just like that. No. You have to plant the trees. And in order to plant the trees, you have to use the environment. You are already using the environment. There is no way anybody can become environmentally friendly. Because you are not friendly to the environment. You feel this building. Are you friendly to the environment? No. You destroy a lot of things. You build your houses. To wear your clothes. To drive. To everything. I'm driving. I'm environmentalist. I'm driving. I'm using fossil fuel. Polluting the air all the way. From Ampang to you. Environmentally friendly. No. I'm not environmentally friendly. I'm not clean. But we can become environmentally friendly. You have two choices. You want to use a car which uses a lot of fossil fuel or you want to use a car which uses the lesser fossil fuel. Use the lesser one. Okay. You still can move. You can be greener. You can be environmentally friendly. That is one thing. So the focus is on, on human. Any questions so far? Anybody do not agree with me? 
a lot of people, a lot of environmental trees. Even who is saying would not agree with me. Because they say, you are against tigers. No, I'm not against tigers. Imagine if you want to go to school. Oh, this is going to be a longer story. <laughs> if you want to go to school, I've been involved in a few projects. Elephant projects, tiger projects, tiger projects. I know tigers. My, one of my friends has been killed by an elephant. I got a friend also in Ecuador who has been killed by the tiger. Another one called Ozo. I also almost got killed by the tiger about a few years ago when, when I was uh, working to track tigers in Palm. If you walk in the forest alone, okay, 6.30 in the, in the evening, and you heard the tiger roaring, you know the tiger can smell you. The tiger can smell you one kilometer away. How do you feel? You are alone then. How do you feel? <laughs> you want to walk or you want to stay? Or you are already dead? <laughs> even before the tiger kick you. Huh? Yeah. You imagine a community who has to go out there to find daily money, daily salary, and at night time they are tigers. Do you think they can go out? If they do not go out, they cannot get money. Now, you want to put. I'm not saying tigers are not important, but this is the new ecosystem that we are facing. facing. We have to be very, very focused on what we are trying to see. Tigers are important. I'm not saying that we should eliminate all the tigers. No, I love tigers. I love tigers. But if I see a tiger trying to attack somebody that I do not know, you, I will kill the tiger first. Even though I do not know you, who you are. Okay? Because you are human. Tiger eating a deer is okay, right? that's the ecosystem, that's how they live. Huh? Every day they will look for deer or barbecue time or whatever. But then the human, ah, okay, that's a different story. Now, this applies to a lot of issues, even elephants in Africa. The government has to kill some of the elephants. A lot of people don't like it because they are killing the elephants. Why? Because there were so many elephants. And a lot of these elephants are destroying the lives of some people there. So they have to make a decision. Are we going to move the people who have been living there for hundreds of years or are we going to kill the elephants? We have decided to cull the elephant. C-U-L-L. Cull is a very soft word for kill. So, we cull the elephants. So the important thing is human spider. Now, when people talk about conservation, it's the same definition. Sustainable development and conservation is the same thing. But sustainable development is not preservation. Preservation is not using the environment at all. We cannot do that. You have to use the environment. A lot of romantics, people who love the environment and do not want to use the environment, I call these people as romantics. There are some limits, you know, but I'm not romantic. I, I'm not romantic at all. I, I will try my best to be realistic. If you have to chop down the tree, to build a house, chop it down. But if you do not have to chop down the tree to kill or to kill animals to survive, then don't do it. You only use the environment when it's very, very necessary. When you can save water, you save water. Do not use water excessively. Okay? So sustainable development or sustainability is about... Now when you say generation, we are talking about human. I am trying to explain this so that you can see the philosophy of Ecomites because I am told to explain what is Ecomites okay? so when, you talk, when we talk about sustainable development and the definition that we had just now the definition focuses on human survival remember or not? right? remember eh? now, when we say sustainable development focuses on human survival that means the human has to make the right decision on what should be done to develop? When we say human, we are talking about a group of people, and if you are talking, let's say, a community, about a community, then what is the sustainable development for that community? Who should decide? The community itself. The community should make the decision. I cannot go to a community and tell them, okay, my friends, I'm an expert here. Okay, you are all around Kampung. I know I went to university, I studied. Now this is what you should do. 
Okay, you have to do this, one, two, three, four, five, and your life will be happy. Is that the right thing to do? Do you want anybody to come to your place and tell you what to do just because he has a PhD? No. You may have PhD, but your PhD is from Chicago. I'm here, living here. You do not know my place. Even if you're from KL, and I'm in, in, in let's say, in Johobaru, people from KL cannot tell you what to do. But what can you do? Okay, you know a lot of things. Okay, you experts know a lot of things. You just give me information. You give me knowledge. You give me data, figures, so that I can make decisions. This is what sustainability is all about. Sustainability is about informed decision making by the stakeholders. I will come to your place. I'm not going to tell you to stop polluting the river because that is your place. I have no business in telling you what to do. But I will go there and tell you, okay, this is what happened, to, what is happening to your river. The, uh, the, the, the river is polluted. Why blah blah blah? One, two, three, four, five, the quality and everything. And then I will tell them, okay, what will happen if this goes on? And at the end of the day, the community itself will decide what should be done. And what happens after that, based on the informed decision making process, is what we term as sustainable development. Sustainable development is not about the indicators or the qualities or the numbers set by some experts or technocrats like professors or lecturers or engineers. Sustainable development is about the decision which is being carried out, made by the people based on enough information. Now this is something that you will have to understand during the breakout sessions, sessions especially for the two groups that are behind me. Why? Because information is power. The only way you can improve your livelihood is through information. How do we improve our information dissemination? Education. That's why for Econites, education is very, is very important. You can get a lot of enforcement officers to go out there and stop people from polluting the river. But that is going to be a very, very short term method. Correct or not? Okay, I don't pollute the river because somebody will catch me 50 ringgit. I have to pay. Now, 1,000 ringgit. But when there are no enforcement office, uh, officers, you pollute the river. A lot of factories do that. When the Department of Environment officers come to their companies, okay, 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 we have to be sure that we don't pollute the rivers. Huh? Then when there are no officers, they pollute the river. Because it's cheaper to pollute the river than to treat the waste. So this is the reason why we believe that education is very important. Because if you are educated, you know what you're doing, you will do something good, not because the law will will punish you if you don't, but because you believe that it is something good, something that you should do. We don't want people not to pollute, we want people not to pollute the rivers because they believe polluting is bad, not because there is one local authority or the BTL officer standing there. Okay, you get my understanding? Now, if you can have that attitude, you I think even if 30% of people in Malaysia can have that attitude, I believe that we have a better environment in Malaysia. And as a result of that, we will have a better livelihood. So education is very important. And like I said, uh, stakeholders, who are the people who are supposed to make the decision, is the people who are being affected, normally the community members. Okay? Because in my life, I've seen a lot of experts telling people what to do. I don't think they have the right to do that. Okay? They can tell people what they, what they can do, but not what they should do. Okay, this is a process like I expressed just now. There should be a very, very transparent and healthy sharing of information between the technocrats. Technocrats are people who are technical experts, engineers, sociologists, uh, economists. They have the information. NGOs like Econite, the government, everybody. There's one more that I, I left out, uh, the private sector. All of them should provide information to the stakeholders, the people who, who, are, who are being affected. 
And this process should be a multiple uh, way communication where everybody should change, exchange information and at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you will come up with the, the stakeholders will come up with the decision. Okay, last one. Any questions? Because I have exceeded my time limit. Any questions? Anything you disagree with me? I always agree to disagree. Because not everybody has the same, same, same thinking. Different people, different way of thinking. If you disagree with me, but you want to say personally, you can tell me. A lot of people disagree with me. But it's okay, we are human.